And people sometimes ask, why do you need the Laplace transform for differential equations when you can solve them with the Fourier transform? And that's actually a good question. And in many cases, you can solve them with the Fourier transform. Here's our very common RLC circuit. And this is the equation, the differential equation for the voltages around the circuit. The voltage X equals all the drops, R times the current. The current is C times dy dt, t, the current across through the capacitor. It's the same as the current around here. Uh, and then the current through the um, inductor times uh, a derivative times the inductance um, plus the voltage drop across the capacitor. And you can convert this. I've drawn it here, written it here with Laplace transform with the S, but you could do with Fourier transforms because those Fourier transform expressions exist. Uh, and then you would get a transform with J omega here instead of S. We'd have J omega instead of S. And uh, J omega squared, of course, would be J squared gives minus one. We'd have omega squared. And we could then look up Fourier transform tables to find the impulse response uh, for this. Now it turns out in some cases you just won't be able to find the Fourier transform function for the inverse Fourier transform and that's because in some cases it just doesn't exist. And the Laplace transform is a generalization and it will exist for the Laplace transform. So let's have a look here for one example when you would definitely need to do that because the Fourier transform doesn't exist. And there's a common one here. I'm going to draw a simplified version, but it's a case which I think many people are familiar with, with feedback. So let's assume a simplified uh, situation where we have an amplifier. Here's a, let's, let's assume X is a speech signal in a microphone, and it's going through a circuit, and it's being amplified and put out into a speaker. Let's say there's a load, RL, and so this voltage at the output of our amplifier is now an amplified version of the voltage across the capacitor. So this is a typical amplifier. It's a simplified version, a simplified circuit, but uh, this is the general uh, situation what happens with amplifiers. So the amplifier is amplifying that voltage. Now let's assume that's uh, some feedback. And let's assume into our microphone there's a, an a small amount, alpha, of the signal that's coming out of the speaker, so A, Y, T. So in this case, for this circuit, uh, now what do we have? We have the same circuit as before. There's no, in the ideal amplifier, there's no current going in here. So we have the same expression before, except now we have plus alpha A, Y, T in our differential equation. So this means we have plus alpha A, Y, S, and we're writing this with a Laplace S. And so we have the same transfer function now, and you can verify it for yourself, except this will have a minus alpha A term here, and a minus alpha A term here. And what we can see for this case, with this feedback, this positive feedback, uh, which uh, from the speaker back into the microphone, which feeds that signal back into this circuit. In this case, it's now going to be a situation where for some values of A and alpha, we're not going to be able to find Fourier transform inverses in the tables if we were to look for them. And this is where we do need to use Laplace. So let's just examine that a little bit. Without the alpha A, this expression here, had poles, our poles S, we're at this negative value, plus or minus this value here. Now, of course, this is just the square of that. So with the square root, if this wasn't there, then the pole, one of the poles would be at zero because this squared, square rooted is this. Minus plus would give us zero. Uh, without the alpha A with the circuit, the actual circuit we had though, we had this R squared on 4L squared minus a positive number. So this square root was going to always be less than this value here. So always the poles will be negative. So that means always stable. And it means the J omega axis would be in the region of convergence. B 
because it's a causal system, because it's a, a real system, it is a causal system, and that would have meant a negative poles means stable system. But now that we have this feedback with an amplification of A and then a feedback leakage of alpha, in this case, this term here now is not necessarily going to be positive. So if alpha times A was bigger than one, then this number here in the brackets would be a negative number, which means with that negative there, it would be a positive number. So it means we're adding to this value here, which means when we take the square root, we get a number bigger than R on 2L, which means minus R on 2L plus a number bigger than it would push this pole into the positive region. And so if, if alpha times A was bigger than 1, we would have a positive pole. And that would mean, because we still know it's a causal system, that would mean our region of convergence with a positive pole, we still have one negative pole, but we now have a positive pole, and that means our region of convergence, because the system's causal, it's a right-hand half plane, that means our region of convergence does not include the J omega axis, which means it's not stable, which is the positive feedback and that sound that you get when a microphone gets too close to a speaker and the sound keeps amplifying and amplifying and it's an unstable system. And so this shows how the Laplace transform with the generalization of the Fourier transform means that we can see in the uh, region of convergence space, we can understand uh, why we can't just use Fourier transforms and we need the generalization of the S parameter. Don't forget to like this video and look below for other videos of related topics. Uh, and if you want to see the video of the basic um, Laplace transform for the initial circuit with the working that I had at the start of this video, uh, you can click on that link.